Hi and welcome to this video all about the fat effects in Logic Pro 10. So this video was actually taken from my complete Logic Pro 10 course. To gain access to this complete course, then be sure to check out the link in the description below. So on the mixer here, I'm just going to add a new plugin. Go down to Multi Effects and choose Fat Effects and then Stereo. Okay, and here it is. So down at the bottom, this is actually the signal flow. So it goes from left to right. You can even change the signal flow by just dragging these around. So say, for example, we want the compressor to be first. We could drag this over to the left. And now the compressor will be first in this signal chain. So I've just actually added this onto a pad sound. So I'm just going to solo this pad sound. And we can actually bypass or turn on the separate effects here with the little bypass button in the top left. If we deselect this, you'll notice it's greyed out and so has band reject at the bottom here. Same with distortion, so we can see in real time what is active and what's been bypassed. So it's kind of like a big multi effects. We've got all these different effects here. I do quite like using this fat effects for synthesizers. I like it when I'm working with audio. For example, a lot of synths will have an LFO or low frequency oscillator. However, when you're working with audio, it's not that easy to add on some LFO. But with this fat effects plugin, you can just add on some LFO really quickly. So I'm just going to go through each of these separate effects now. So the first one is band pass. So we can just drag this around here, and this will basically allow any of the frequencies in here and anything that's either side will be cut out. So you can hear the highs, some of the highs are cut out and some of the lows are cut out. If I drag it to the left, some of the lows will enter. Now it cuts out some of these highs. And the highs will come back in. And if I drag it over, you'll notice the lows are cut out. We can have reject mix, so this will actually mix in what we cut out. Add some resonance, some low resonance and high resonance. And we have different types of filters as well. We've got classic, smooth, edgy, rich, sharp, and gritty. Let's try gritty. You can hear that grit now. Okay, let's just deselect the band pass. Now let's go down and have a look at distortion. At the moment down here it says bit crush because we have bit crusher and we can actually choose three different types of distortion. So let's just put this one down to 0% and we can choose one of these soft saturation, diode, tube, scream, vary drive and a few other ones as well. So let's just choose down sampler just for a bit of fun. You'll notice this is quite an extreme sound. So you can use this for sound design as well if you want something a bit more extreme or a bit more experimental, but soft saturation is a nice one to work with. So you can get that nice warm saturation sound, which can be really useful for synths, bass sounds, maybe even kick drums. Add on the other distortion as well, get a blend. Let's just add Bit Crusher as the first one. And we can bypass this or turn it on with this button here. I'm just going to choose soft saturation and have it about here. Okay, going across we have mod effects, modulation effects. Here we can create kind of a chorus sound or even a flanger sound. So if we increase the rate and get more of a flanger type sound, we can mix it in as well. We have different types here, classic, soft, doubler, heavy. So heavy creates more of a flanger type sound. If we put it back to classic, decrease the mix and rate, get more of a chorus sound. We can bypass this on or off. Maybe about here, this sound. Then going along, we have bass enhancer. So I'm just going to turn off mod effect. 
and you can choose the tune in Hertz. If you have headphones on or large speakers, you'll be able to hear this now. If you're just listening on a phone or laptop, this might be quite hard to hear. We can increase the Hertz, kind of a higher bass enhancer. We have different types, that's warm, you can choose classic as well. Quite subtle, and then we have clip as well. It's a bit easier to hear. And if we bypass it and turn it on, it just enhances the bass really, as it says here. So this can be useful for kick drums, can be useful for synths, obviously bass sounds. Then we have compressor, where we can choose the amount and the release. And if we click on type here, this is actually the same compressor types we have on the Logic Pro compressor. Can't really do quite as much as this, there's not as much on the compressor, there's only amount and release, but it's quite cool we can use these different compressor types. Going up we have filter, this is the main filter, we have cutoff, resonance, we have drive or saturation, and then we have mix as well, so we can mix the unfiltered sound with the filtered sound, and we have all these different types of filters, low pass, band pass, high pass, comb filters, and some more kind of experimental filters as well. So let's just try low pass, 12 dB, edgy. If we increase the resonance too much, you'll notice there will be a bit of a ringing sound. So just use that sparingly. Get some drive as well. You can hear it's allowing the low frequencies to pass, and cutting out the higher frequencies. So this can be useful for automation, can be useful for simps. These sounds can be automated as well. And going across we have XY pad. So we can actually choose two different settings for the X and two different settings for the Y. And we can choose the depth and positive or negative values. So right now we have bandpass low cutoff and bandpass high cutoff. Let's change this to filter cutoff. And you'll notice now that this blue line has appeared and wherever this little dot in the XY pad is, this will actually change in real time this white dot over here as well. So we can change to negative values notice this blue line that's gone over to the left for the filter cutoff and when we move it around it will move this little white dot. Let's change the white pad to distortion soft saturator. Okay so when we move this up you can see this little white line is moving. It's going backwards when we move it up because we have a negative value if we put it to positive value. Notice it moves over this way. That way it will go up when we move this up. Let's just move the filter cut off here. And then we can actually change this. It does involve quite a bit of tweaking and playing with, but this can be really useful for live automation as you can automate this XY pad as well. To increase the depth, just move this filter cut off down. Okay, I'm just going to add this on the drum bus now. So you can hear how this might be used for drums. So I have a drum bus set up here. So all the drums are going to this channel. So I'm just going to drag this over to drums. Now let's unsolo the chords and hear the track. Let's just turn off the distortion. And filter in the drums. I would normally use this for synth sounds, more electronic sounds, but you could use it for drums. Could be useful for a kick drum, the bass enhancer, you could add distortion onto the kick as well, maybe the snare. So there's a lot of different possibilities. Let's just drag this back over to the synthesizer. 
which is this one here, chords. And I'm just going to show you the envelope follow, the low frequency oscillators, and then the master as well. So I'm just going to turn off this XY pad and turn on envelope follow. See this white dot is actually jumping up and down on the filter. That's because we have the target set to filter cutoff. Here we can select the attack, release, and the depth. We can also select negative values. You can see here the filter is going to the left now. We can choose different targets. For example, I could choose filter resonance. You can see this white dot moving here. We can uh, adjust the attack and release as well. We can also adjust this depth amount. Fast attack going. It's a lot more noticeable with filter cutoff. We also have two identical LFOs or low frequency oscillators. Let's turn on the first one. We can choose a different wave type up here sine, triangle, ramp up, ramp down, square, random hold, and random glide. Whatever we want as the target, I'm going to choose filter cutoff again and just turn off the envelope follower just so we don't get confused. And then we can have rate so it's synced to the clock of our tempo. So we can have quarter notes, half notes, sixteenth notes perhaps. So this is one of the main things I like about this fat effects. If working with audio like I am here. It's quite hard to set up an LFO. Obviously, if you're working with a synthesizer, a lot of synths will have an LFO, but in audio, it's a lot more difficult to uh, set up an LFO. But with this fat effects, we can just quickly set up an LFO, which I think is really useful. So here we have dotted 16th notes. We can mix this in. It doesn't have to be all the way in. I like to get a blend like this. And we can change this to Hertz as well. We don't have to sync it to the clock. So this could be useful for a build-up. This could be automated as well. Choose a different wave type. Type that's true triangle. You can also add another LFO on top of that. This one I'm going to sync as triplets, quarter notes. Get a blend going and have this as filter drive and change this to a square wave. A bit more obvious. There we go. You can hear the drive on that LFO 2 and filter cutoff on LFO 1. This bypass obviously is a huge difference. And then going along, we have master. Here we can have a limiter, hard clipping, soft limiting, or off. Then we can have a mix. So we can have the bypass effect if it's on zero, and then mix it in with the effect here, which I think is really useful. So we have input as well, so we can decrease in decibels or increase in decibels in the input. And down here, we can also choose the output level, so we can decrease or increase the output level. So thank you for watching this lecture all about fat effects. I like using this on simps for electronic sounds. I think it's really good fun and it can be quite useful. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture. This video was part of my complete Logic Pro 10 course. To gain access to this full course, then be sure to check out the link in the description below.